Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I hand make scrunchies and bows. I've been doing so for almost nine years now. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I did previously, uh, like a year and a bit ago. It was my first viral video. I will be making as many scrunchies as I can in the next 12 hours and then I'll let you know how many I've made and how long it took me to make. I've been wanting to do another one of these because I got my Juki machine. It was so much faster than my Singer. So the Singer is 1100 stitches per minute, whereas my Juki is 5,000 stitches per minute. It is an industrial machine, so it's a Juki 8000A, and it is amazing. I love it. I will just be doing my regular size scrunchies today. Since my last video, I've come out with XL scrunchies, petite scrunchies. Um, I think I was doing mini scrunchies at the time, but yeah, I've got all sorts of different scrunchies. I'll also be answering questions just like last time. Let me know in the comments below what time you think I'll get. So the last video, it took me about 3 minutes and 42 seconds on average to make a scrunchie. I reckon that is a lot less now. I will be cutting today though. I don't think I cut in the last video. I think I just grabbed it out of the box. So that will maybe deter the result a little bit. Got so many nice fabrics to show you guys. Okay, let's go have a look at the fabrics. Then I'm going to start on cutting. I've chosen 92 different fabrics to cut today. Let's get started. Okay, so I've just finished cutting all the fabrics. I think I may have cut a little bit too many. Uh, it's really like, I don't even know how many here.
I'm dropping everything. All right, so I've just finished sewing all of these. I do the tube method, which is just sewing a straight line. I don't do the merino method for my regular scrunchies, only for my XL scrunchies. It's just my personal preference. I prefer doing the tube method. Now it's time to flip. So I use my flip stick. My dad made it for me years and years ago. <laughs> While I'm flipping, I might do some of the questions. I'm currently 23 years old. I turned 24 this year. I've had my business since 20th of January 2014. <laughs> Coming up to nine years very soon. I started out with bows. I did like a heap of other products. Gone through a few different things in the past. And then I sort of like stuck with my bows and eventually I introduced scrunchies four years ago. How big are my scrunchies? For my regular size, it's 4.5 inches by half of the WF. WF is salvage to salvage. So for this one, it's 58 inches. I cut it in half. So that makes like 29 for one that's cotton, cotton's usually about 44 inches, again, in half, 22 inches. My XLs, it's around, it's almost 7 inches by the full WF. It does depend on the material I use as well. How many hours a day do you usually work? This has changed quite a bit in the past, like, 6 months, because I've been taking a lot of time off and holidays and, yeah, just a bit more time to myself sort of thing, and, like, time spent with Reese. Generally, when Reese is away, because he works fly in, fly out, so he's away every two weeks, I will work probably from 9 or 10 a.m. till maybe 6 or 7 p.m. Um, just depends on what I'm doing during the day, though. And then when he's home, I'll usually work probably like 9 until 4 or 5, and then I'll have some days off as well. How many scrunchies have you sold? I think in the last video I said that it would probably be around 20,000. Honestly, I've, I haven't done any sort of math, but just like from the orders and stuff, it would have to be at least 50,000 to 70,000 now that I've sold in the last couple of years, which is a lot. <laughs> a lot of scrunchies. It does depend on the week. It does depend if I've got markets, depends on if I've got a sale on my store or a new launch. So it depends on a lot of things, but on average, I'm probably making probably about 200 scrunchies a week, maybe more, especially like peak season. Like 200 is like, you know, my normal sort of amount of scrunchies I'll make. And that's just like a regular size, really. Well, during peak season, I'll probably be making around 500 scrunchies a week and like selling them as well. Do you ever get sick of making scrunchies? No, nah, I really like making scrunchies. <laughs> I mean, I've been making so many every day for years now and haven't gotten sick of it. I've been on a couple holidays this year and I've missed being in the room, like in here and like making scrunchies. What inspired you to start a small business? I started when I was 15 years old and I honestly just wanted to make some money because I was trying to like get a job and no one was hiring me. It's all outside of the box and thought I could make money from making bows. And how I found the bows was I was making a gift for someone that I just found a tutorial online. I just typed in like things to make for little girls. I found a bow tutorial. And I started making some bows and I just put two and two together. I was like, I could sell these. Like back then it wasn't very common, I'll be honest. Like it wasn't that common to see a lot of online businesses that were like young. Nothing like it is today. Like you go on Instagram and you're bombarded with thousands of small businesses everywhere. Like anyone and everyone could sort of start a small business. Back then it wasn't as common and Instagram and you know socials weren't as popular. So yeah, it's definitely changed a lot in the past few years. But it's also, it's good though as well because you see a lot more younger people taking an interest in, like it doesn't even have to be like craft, like crafting stuff, but like just taking an interest in wanting to be financially independent and make their own money and, and like start their own business sort of thing. Do people judge you when you first started? I had a lot of support. So when I first started, my parents were really supportive. So were my friends at the time. So I don't know. I don't know if anyone actually judged. Like I didn't really look for anyone judging me. I didn't like think about it or like even acknowledge anyone else that could have the potential to judge and like be mean or whatever. I'm sure there was people like that, but I never really paid attention to anyone else. I just stayed in my lane and kept going. And I guess it really helps that I had so much support behind me, everyone like cheering me on. I probably get judged more now being almost 24 
and when people ask what I do, you know, if I say I make scrunchies, people judge that, even though they have no idea, like, the potential. <laughs> anyway, my camera's about to die, so I'm going to keep doing these, and I'll do the rest of the questions later. I'm listening to Hamish and Andy's podcast and it's kind of funny. <laughs> so if you just see me randomly laugh, it's I'm literally it's just because I'm not listening. <laughs> So I've just finished flipping all those and cutting them and now I'm just going to cut all my elastic. So I use a different elastic to most of scrunchy makers. I use ones that this thick. It's two centimeters wide so it is very thick and it's a lot more dense than other scrunchy makers. That's just yeah what I like to use because I have thick hair and that works really well for thick hair. So I need to cut a heap of this. And then I need to start threading. We're currently five hours in, so I have still seven hours to go. And I'll say we're halfway, I think. Or just about. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> Okay, I am ready to thread elastic. I use a bobkin. They are the best things ever if you want to thread things through something. Mine's a clover bobkin as well. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know about the glue that I use. And before you make assumptions, no, I don't just glue the scrunchies. I sew them, but in order to do that, I have to glue them first just to hold them in place because it's just way too hard to hold them while sewing. Yeah, I just like press it for a couple of seconds and and then it just dries like that. Easier for me to do it this way. Especially when I'm making in bulk. Fabric glue, Helmer's fabric glue. Alright, let's look at these questions. Have you ever thought of doing charity scrunchies? I've done like donation scrunchies before. So most recently I literally did them last weekend. I was raising money for Mia, uh, a girl that has brain cancer in my town. I did scrunchies to raise money for the bushfires that happened in Australia. That was back in 2020, like January 2020. I raised over $4,000, which was really awesome, but just by selling scrunchies and hair bows, and they had like patterns on them that were like Australian animals. How do you grow your orders and followers? Social media is definitely a really good way to grow your followers and also potentially gain new customers. For me, currently my strategy is to post on my story and try and keep myself active. But if you really want to really succeed on there, you'd really need to get into reels and TikToks and stuff and post consistently, even if it's, you know, not that great. Like some of the stuff I post, I literally have just taken them from bits of my YouTube and posted them with some random sound and some of them have been like thousands and thousands of views even though I have put no effort into it whereas others I put so much effort into and they barely get like a thousand views which I know is still a lot but it's not really that many compared to how many followers I have. Even just sharing old posts onto your stories helps um, keep your name there in people's minds and I've just recently started doing email marketing which I think has been really helpful. How do you make a successful small business? Success can be defined in many different ways. I was successful only within a year or two of my business, but that's because um, like, I was happy with the small amount of money I was making as a teenager. Maybe now, if I was to start again and only make you know, a couple thousand a year, I wouldn't deem that as successful because it wouldn't be enough to go full time sort of thing. 
It really just depends on what you deem successful. Again, social media will help. You can do like paid ads and stuff. I don't do paid ads because I rely pretty much solely on social media to get my name out there. But obviously not everyone starting out can do that. So paid advertisements can help. I feel like you just really need to show up for every day for a small business. It's, it's hard. Like no one ever says running a business is easy. It is hard. It takes so much time and commitment when i went full time i was working like 12 hour days every day there was like no sort of break it's only now that i've become bigger that i can sort of take a little bit of a step back because i don't need to work as hard to get those orders through the door like i still have to make the orders and everything but i don't have to be working behind the scenes as much it just it does take a lot of effort and a lot of hard work and it does take time like you hear of a lot of people that successful overnight or like successful within like a couple months i'm coming into my ninth year of my business and i was nowhere near making six figures a couple years ago yeah it just takes time and effort and a lot of yeah motivation what's your favorite part about running a small business uh my favorite part at the moment is just meeting all the other small creators or you know um customers even i have like a lot of people that come up to me at market saying they watch my channel and like they're creators themselves or they just you know really enjoy watching me which is really cool i think that's like the coolest thing at the moment like influence so many other people into and inspire them into making like their own small businesses or just inspiring them to keep going motivate others to just keep going like that's pretty cool to think about <laughs> obviously i enjoy making the scratchies best part is probably the sewing of the long tubes like these so the first thing I did really this morning and cutting I quite like those two tasks even like flipping them I quite like where did you get your light box from so I finally upgraded my photography system <laughs> I started using my camera that I vlog with and I bought a light box the light box in question is quite large and it is from JB Hi-Fi and it was about $99 but it was it's really worth it it's awesome how did your business become known? I definitely think my business became known from Reels. I think last year was my like, my biggest growth year because I think I was at 13,000 at the start of last year. So I started 2021. And then by the end of last year, I was at 40,000 um, on Instagram. And like I think I started at 1,000 for YouTube. And now I'm at, and then by the end, I was at 40,000. Do you ever get overwhelmed and think a normal job would be better? I never think that a normal job would be better. I really enjoy being able to work my own hours. I think I could go back to a 9 to 5, if I'm honest. Like, if I ever did, it would have to be something I'm really interested in and, like, really enjoy because it's never felt like work to me. The only things that ever feel like work to me is when I have to do sponsor videos. They're just hard because they're, like, more scripted. They're not as natural. And I think it's really a good thing that I've sort of taken so long to get to where I am now because... I've had time to learn and I've had time to get a handle on things and adjust to everything. Um, whereas like if you were just thrown in the deep end, it would be a much harder and you'd probably feel very much more overwhelmed. Because I've done this for so long, it, I don't really get too overwhelmed. How much do you make at markets? When I first started out, I barely made any money at all at markets. I filmed a video just recently saying how much money I made at my first market and that was six dollars after the store fee was taken out and I'm pretty sure half of that was from my mum purchasing something. So like there's always going to be bad markets at the start and even bad markets even now even after doing them for so many years there's still going to be bad markets and sometimes you just can't pick it. Sometimes you'll expect to make a certain amount in a market because you know you've made that much every single time you've been there and then all of a sudden you would make like barely anything that's what happened to me like only two weeks ago generally speaking in off-peak times like it's anywhere between like 300 to 500 dollars like country markets usually my more expensive markets they're anywhere between like 800 to 1500 per market and then of course when you get more closer to christmas like October and November are my biggest market season. That's where I'll be probably bringing in $500 plus per market. But it really does depend on so many factors. Like it depends on if there's other scrunchie stores there. If the people that attend the market are actually attending for me or like because they know my product. Or if 
there's just random people attending. The location matters, the like weather matters. So like if it's raining, there won't be as many people about. As I said, it's taking me so long to get to that point. For my market store setups, if you look at them even six months apart, the improvement of not just my quality of products, but just even the setup, it's more inviting. That helps so much as well. What is your favorite craft fair to sell at? Creators Collective Market. But they haven't run since COVID hit. But for ones that are like every month, Pakenham is one of my favorite ones to do. Pakenham Lakeside with Unrivaled Events. And then also probably like Glengarry. I always do quite well at Glengarry. I think it's because I have a lot of support and a lot of people there that sort of want to purchase from me, which is really nice. And plus Glengarry is like literally 10 minutes away from here. It's one of my closest markets besides Trug when it just opened back up. But again, is closed for the winter season, but will be open again for the next month. Funnily enough, Glengarry and Pakenham are on the same day. Pakenham closes during the winter and like I think autumn, a lot of the autumn season. Favorite fabrics to use? Uh, my favorite fabrics are probably satin. I also really like double cloth at the moment. It's just so soft. How do you find or get into markets? Mostly word of mouth. So a lot of the places I've found have been through either other small businesses promoting them, like, you know, saying that they've been there, or from talking to other small businesses. Pretty much all of mine have been word of mouth. Okay, I'm going to get off again, and I'm going to put all these, all this elastic in these scrunchies. It's going to take me a while. Honestly, it's probably going to take me two hours just to elasticate everything. We'll see how we go. Anyway, I'm going to jump back on very soon. So when my back starts hurting from like working for a really long time, I get the beanbag out. <laughs> So much better. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost finished elasticating. Elasticing. I think I got it right the first time. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've almost finished finished threading all the elastic for the scrunchies. So it is getting like late. I think it's like 5.30 or something. It's very dark outside already because, you know, it's just that time of year in Australia. I thought I'd do some more questions while I finish off these last few ones. So I've had a few questions about my website and like what I would recommend and if I pay for it. So I definitely recommend Shopify for a website platform if you can afford it. If you make enough sales to sort of make it worth it. That one cost me like $29 a month, like USD. And that's a lot cheaper for me than using something like Etsy. But Etsy, I think, is also a really good platform to start out on because it's a very low cost platform, relatively, like to start out on. Once you get bigger, that's when you need to think about moving to another platform. Because if you're paying like more than $30, like 30 USD a month, you might as well move to Shopify, depending on how much traffic you're bringing versus how much traffic Etsy is bringing. Because they are definitely different platforms. Etsy is a platform that offers their own search engine, so people can go onto Etsy and type in scrunchies and, you know, my stuff might come up. Whereas Shopify, you have to direct everyone to your site. How many orders do you get in a day? Well, like currently, because I've just come back from like holidays and stuff, I probably only get a couple a day, like two or three. I probably do about 30 to 50 a week normally. And then if I have like a sale or a new launch or if it's getting closer to like Christmas, that's going to like almost double. But yeah, it really depends uh, on so many things about how many orders I get. I use a one millimeter stitch, close my scrunchies. I don't backstitch or anything, and I mean, I haven't had any complaints, and I've sold, yeah, thousands and thousands of scrunchies, so I guess it's working. <laughs> some people will agree and some people disagree, but it works for me. Okay, so these are all the scrunchies that I've done so far. I just need to sew the elastic, fold that piece under, and then sew the label in. This is probably like the worst part of the job, though. <laughs> Thank you. 
I now get my labels made uh, overseas, but I used to hand make them all. That's my first YouTube video on my channel. When like my business grew like bigger, it was just getting so hard to hand make all the labels. So yeah, best decision was doing this. So I'm up to my first box of sewing labels in. Um, I still haven't like sewn all the elastic or folded under. I thought I'd just go box by box. What I mean by the one mil stitch as well. So you can't really see it. And I think I'm gonna go till about 10 p.m. because I started a little bit late this morning um, and I've had breaks. So I have had short breaks, but quite a few short breaks throughout the day. And I reckon it'd probably be over an hour worth of breaks, but yeah, I reckon if I go till 10, that'll be about, yeah, that would be almost 12 hours of sewing and like making. Okay, so it is like 10 o'clock now, so it's pretty much 12 hours. Probably actually isn't exactly 12 hours, probably a little bit less still because of the breaks. I've just finished these ones. I still have one box to go, so I'm going to do that and then figure out how long it's been. It'll probably be 13 hours though by the time I'm finished, 13 hours. I won't count them tonight, so this will probably be the last time you'll see me. Go back on tomorrow and count them. And then, yeah, divide it by 13 hours or something. But yeah, pretty much all done, which is good. Finished. I'm going to bed now. Hi, guys. Okay, so I'm back and I'm going to count the scrunchies now. Yeah, I've got five full tubs of these. Also, I've got um, new tubs of these from Kmart. I used, to, I did originally get these from like AliExpress, but they sell them at Kmart at the moment, so definitely go in and get some. And they're actually cheaper than what I paid for on from AliExpress, so that's good too. <laughs> I also had a couple more questions before I tell you the count. Do you think others in the scrunchie community, even friends, are jealous of your success? Not my friends or anything. Like, if they are, that's really sad. <laughs> like, because I really believe in community over competition. Like, I want to support other fellow scrunchie makers and I want to share my tips and share my... Share, share everything with you guys. So, I hope no one's jealous of success because it's just... I don't know. You'll get there eventually in your own way and on your own path. Everyone's success is different and everyone defines success differently. Would you consider hiring help a couple days a week or even to do markets? I have considered hiring help at the moment. I think I'm okay. I think I just feel very reluctant to like sort of hand hand over the reins to someone else sort of thing. I'm yeah, I'm very um particular <laughs> about certain things. I don't even know the word. Everything has to be perfect. <laughs> The only person that I've ever found that does every everything the way I do it is Reese, and I think that's why we're so good together because everything that I do he would think of the same way we think very alike and so if I could find someone like that which would want to work for me I mean Reese said he would quit his job and work for me <laughs> so maybe Reese in the future What's your 5, 10 year plan with your business and personal life? 5, 10 year plan, I still want to be doing something that makes me happy. Like if something doesn't make me happy, um, like my work doesn't make me happy, I wouldn't want to do it. That's what I've said since I was very, very young. I've always wanted to grow up and do something I love doing. Uh, so every day doesn't feel like work, it's just something I enjoy. <laughs> yeah, in the next 5 or 10 years, I hope to be still doing something I love. If it is still scrunchies or if it's YouTube or if it's who knows, like, there's so much possibilities and so much can change in 10 years and even 5 years. Every, so much can change in even a couple months. So, yeah, I don't want to limit myself and I don't want to, like, put big expectations on myself either. I definitely want to keep home-based. I like the home-based sort of thing. But 
definitely within the next couple of years I would like to build uh, and have like a very very big studio and all the other things so that that's the goal and yeah just keep creating but I'm sure everything will change social media wise and yeah I'll just have to go with the flow <laughs> personal life obviously want to build yeah get married all that sort of stuff you know how do affiliate links work how are they different from sponsorships so affiliate links are pretty much a link that the sponsors will give me and when you guys click on that link and purchase something from that link, I'll get a commission. So I'll get like 5% of the sale, 10% of the sale, depending on what the company, like how they operate the affiliate links. It doesn't come out of like any extra that you pay or anything. All right, now I'm going to say the final number of how many scrunchies I made in a day. Okay, so I'm reading now. Um, I probably got the math wrong because I'm pretty sure I got it wrong last time. But I'm just going to go off the math I did last time. <laughs> so that it's like, you know even across the board sort of thing so i did 13 hours i didn't do it yesterday i actually took the day off yesterday because i was i had other things to do so i made scrunchies for 13 hours i made 366 scrunchies so that should be around two minutes and 13 seconds per scrunchie and just in comparison last time it was 210 scrunchies i made in 12 hours and it was three minutes and 42 seconds uh that took me so i've cut that down a lot with the industrial machine. The industrial can only do so much though. I still have to flip um, elastic and all that other stuff. So yeah, it still takes a bit of time to do all that. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the results. I sorta of thought I was gonna make a little bit more. I was, hoping to, I was hoping to double it. The machine can only do so much and my hands can only work, work so fast. So uh, it's still a pretty good result. So let me know, did you think I made heaps of scrunchies? Do you think I would have done better than that? I did think I thought I was gonna do more, <laughs> but that's okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative with all the questions. And if if your question didn't get answered, probably because I didn't have time to answer it today. Now I have to go sort out all these scrunchies into color-coded. Because, <laughs> yeah, I like doing that for photos. I'll show you guys once I do it, though. And here it is, all colour coordinated just the way I like it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming along on my journey with me to see if I could beat my previous record, which I'm glad to say I did. I won't need to do any market stock this weekend because um, it's all here. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this, vlogs and tutorials, all bunch of things, stuff I do in my daily life as a scrunchie maker and a small business owner. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!